I'll I'll create a new fresh new uh, mapping for lookup. So I will use, let's say I'm going to use the source as a Oracle database employees and departments. So employees is my source and then I will use an expression transformation, maybe this one. Okay. And then I'm going to add another lookup transformation. Now I want to do lookup on what table or what so maybe it's a part of the source or a target, but on, on what table or flat file, whatever. So I want to do a lookup on my department's table. I'll explain this thing in detail later on. Let me first finish and show you how it works, then I'll explain. Okay, so this is my lookup transformation. This is my department name, okay. I don't want the department name, I want department number here.
Yeah, I'll explain about that, the lookups, what scenarios we will use lookup and everything, I'll explain that. Let me first show you what is lookup, how it works, then I'll, I'll come those things in details. Okay, let's first understand what I have done and then I'll explain uh, lookup. So if you remember, my employees table do not have a department ID. So what I have done is, if you look to my mapping, I have read the records from my employees table. I have taken the department ID from employees table and I have done a lookup on my departments table where my employee uh, where my department ID coming from my employees is equal to department ID from my department table and I have taken the corresponding department name okay this is my department name so this is what I have done so this is called lookup now usually when we do a lookup is let's say I have a mostly you have to understand lookup there is a if you if you um, if you try to recall the dimensional modeling, I have a lot of dimensions and I have a lot of of fact tables. Now the fact tables are connected to dimension tables through keys, right? Through oh, dimension and uh, keys. Now, how do I populate those dimension surrogate keys? I have to do a lookup on each and uh, each dimension to get that keys. That means, let's say, I have uh, um, I have got uh, uh, there's a transaction happen. Let's uh, let's let's uh, understand this. I uh, have a transaction which is in Walmart. Let's say when you buy, uh, you bought let's say ten items. You, you bought 10 items in a Walmart and one receipt is generated. Now this receipt is nothing, if you can think of this, this receipt is a fact transaction, a one transaction record in a fact table. Now how this transaction is connected to all other dimensions? Let's say I have the one dimension table called store dimension. Now this store dimension has nothing but my store ID and I have, I have um, uh, all the store locations. So store ID one and which uh, which is the location. What are the details? Is it a super center, a super store, or blah blah blah? All the store details. Then I have I have a, a employee dimension which says is, is employee ID. So through that I will come to know um, 
when I look to that specific transaction, maybe I'll come to know in which store this transaction has happened, who was the employee who has done this transaction, and then I have a inventory dimension. If I do a lookup on that inventory dimension, I'll come to know uh, what are the items have been sold. Okay, because in the transaction, maybe it's showing me only the item number. When I'm doing a lookup on my item inventory dimension or item dimension, I will come to know actually which are the items have been sold. Then if I do a lookup on the date dimension, I will come to know on which day of the year this transaction has happened. And similarly, uh, so you're getting my point, right? So the whole idea of lookup is you have few tables from where you have to read the data to populate your target table. So from the source, those records are not coming. So you have to do a lookup on some other tables to get those values. This is the whole overall idea about the lookup. Any questions? No? OK. Whatever I have done here is a connect static lookup. So if you want to write it down, write it down. This is a connected static lookup. OK. Now, why it is connected? Because it's connected, you can see. And the other, a good part of connected lookup is I can take as many outputs as possible. Like, let's say, if I have a manager, if I, let's think of this, if I add, let's add manager ID also here. So then if I have to take the manager ID of that specific department, what I can do is I can connect this one. So I'll get the manager ID of that department. So I am taking the department ID and trying to get as much as information possible from the department's table for that specific department. Okay. Now, few things. If I do not have a match. That means, let's say my source have a department called department number 100, and I'm trying to do a lookup on my department's table where department number is equal to 100, and I couldn't find a match because department number 100 does not exist at all. So, so these values, department name and manager ID will be nulls. So for non-matching records, those lookup will return null values for the output ports, okay? Now, if you look into the uh, these ports, you will see I have input, output, and lookup. I will come to the R later on, so uh, lookup. So this says these are my lookup, uh, lookup table ports, and this is coming from my input, okay? Now, uh, I'll come to these things. Okay. Now, if you go here, I can have all these operations. So I can tell, uh, I can do a lookup on my chart, on any table saying that, okay, my department ID from source is not equal to department ID on the lookup table. So these are the possible operations I can do. Any questions? Okay. Now, lookup, lookup, what is the difference between the lookup and, yeah, I, I'll, I'll come to that. That's a very good question. I'll come to the, come to the difference between a joiner and lookup. Um, okay, let, let's tell this right away. Let's, so let's think of this. So I have, what I have done is now, try to understand this. This is, this is very important, okay? In what are the situations I will be using a joiner and what are the situations I will be using a lookup. So let's try to understand this. I have my employees as a source. I did a lookup on our departments. 
and I am populating my target. Oh, sorry. Now is it okay? Now what I am going to do is I let's think a different way. Let's say my department is my source. Yeah, department uh, lookup is like a joiner because you are doing a join only. But there are you you will not use lookup in all situations, or you will not join use joiner in all situations. There are situations where you have to use lookup, and there are situations where you will use joiner. Okay, L let me give an example, then you maybe you will understand better. So let's say um, let's think of this. I have a department as a source. And I'm doing a lookup on my target. I'm uh, sorry, do, I'm doing a lookup on my employees table. Okay. And I'm trying to do DPT underscore ID is equal to DPT underscore ID. Now. Department. So uh, when information will run, it will read the first record from the department table. Let's say department first row is department number ten, and I'm doing a lookup on my employees table, and I'm trying to see what is the department number ten, and and I found there are ten matches on department number ten. Right. So that means there are ten employees on department number ten. Getting my point. Now lookup cannot handle multiple matches. If you have multiple matches and if you want to return all those ten rows, you have to use joiner. But if you want to return, so if you look here, if you look here, there is a property which says lookup policy on multiple matches. I will say, let's say, I'll say use first value. So when you have multiple matches, whoever comes first, they return that value. So lookup will anyway it can return only one row. Any questions? Understood this point? Okay. So lookup can return only one row, okay? So if it has multiple matches, then you have to select something from here. Now, okay. So this is uh, uh, overall your. So I, I gave you the example of multiple matches. If I if my source is a department and I'm doing a lookup on my uh, on employees, then and for each department ID from source, you are getting multiple uh, multiple matches on the lookup table, right? Okay, some are getting some questions. Hold on, let me see what are the questions. On what common column we are trying to match department and Employees table, which key here? Um, de for departments and employees, we have the key here is department ID. On which we will try to do the match. Hey, Shogun, I can give you an example for lookup. I'm sorry. I can give you an example for lookup. Uh, uh, more examples on lookup you want? No, I can give you an example for lookup. Oh yeah, go ahead, please. Yeah, actually, if the table has a let's assume like a table has a combination, if a, a co column A has some value and column B have a combination, like column A has certain values and column B has certain values, then it has to retrieve column C. And column A values are in one table and column B values are in another table. We can have a join for those two tables and have a lookup into this uh, lookup table. The table itself is called a lookup table. That uh, The data in that lookup table will be changing. It won't be the st standard. 
So we cannot write a standard code. So for every time when we run it, we have to update that lookup table on the database side. Then we can have a lookup and uh, extract the data. In that example, in that scenario, lookup table will be a best fit. Did you get it? What yeah. I meant? Yeah, I got it. Got it. So yeah, so basically, lookup is you have to. Um, okay, another example is let's say I, I'm giving giving you one more example. Let's say uh, I have. Usually, usually most of the times, you, you in a dimensional modeling, you have to in dimensional modeling, you have to do a lot of lookups on the dimension table because dimension value does not change very frequently. We have seen that. So that is dimension. The kind of example I gave, like I have a transaction in a Walmart, and if you look into the Walmart that receipt, it says the item number, right? What item you bought and maybe a very small abbreviation of the item. So if somebody wants to know what exactly that item or what is the definition, like details of that item, how you come to know, you have to go to the item dimension table, do a lookup on the item key, and he will get the details. So uh, if anyone has any questions on lookup, just ask me any specific questions, then probably I can answer them and then you will get a better idea. If anyone has at all, any question. Hey, hey Shobhan, like in this example that uh, we just saw, right, like we can also mm -hmm. use a joiner transformation and do the same thing, right, like. like yeah, you can use, use uh, you, we have already seen the same thing using joiner transformation, but Given me a choice, I will always use a lookup instead of joiner for this situation. Because department IDs and department names do not change very frequently, right? I have a table which is department ID and department name. I want the department name. I look up on the table with the department ID, get the value. So will there uh, be any like uh, performance related like? Between using joiner transformation or like using the lookup transformation, or like, is there any criteria of using it? Uh, no, there is no criteria. You have to understand when you have to use joiner and what when you have to use lookup. Okay, I will see. Let me give you another example. This is a example of a lookup. Okay. Uh, is it bit now? Is it equine still? No, I don't think so. Okay. And this is a classic example, and this we use ninety nine percent of the times. Yeah, we can say master tables have the values, and we do lookup. Yeah, usually we don't use the table. We you don't use the term masters. In dimensional modeling, we use dimensions and facts, and then lookup. There are few lookup tables also. Okay, so okay, let me give you an example. So let's say, think of this. I have Okay, let's think of this. I have uh, a table. Let's say I'm a, I'm a Walmart, and I have a table which has the item. It's an item dimension table which has the columns like item number, then item name, item and uh, dimensions like uh, color, size, price, blah blah blah. Okay, so basically this table has the details about all my items in uh, whatever I am selling. So what's my point? What I, whatever I am selling in Walmart, it has uh, details of all those items. Now, so I have a lot of vendors who are supplying me these items, right? Now let's say, think of this, I have a pen which I use to sell and it, uh, the pen and it have a specific dimension and then specific color, specific price. 
Now, the, all of a sudden, the vendor, what the manufacturer of this pin, what they did is they changed the color of this pin. So every night my jobs are running in who is reading data from um, all these sources to see what are the changes coming in. So let me see, let me try to draw a diagram then you can understand. So I uh, I have some sources sources which tells me that. Uh, these, these details are coming from the manufacturer every day which tells me what are the items I am selling and still they have the same specification of the items or not. So now I found that a, a specific pin has changed its dimension, color and also the price. Now how do I know whatever is coming from my source and whatever is my target are same or changed? The way is I will do, so I will read the data from my source, I will do a lookup on my target and compare the data from my source with target to see if these data are new or existing. Make sense? So this is a classic example of lookup. Any questions? Okay. So let me go ahead and look up. So now, so whatever we have seen is connected static lookup cache. Now, how how it works is how Informatica uh, creates. So, in lookup also, we have two kinds of caches. One is index cache, and one is your data cache. How this lookup works is yes, it supports type two. It, it actually this is a wrong statement. It, you can implement type two using lookup. That is the correct statement. That is the correct statement. Okay. Now, what I'm saying, I was saying is, um, yes. So the way it, it has data cache as well as uh, it has a data cache as well as index cache. Now, uh, how Informatica implements this? Impl Informatica will run these query. Whatever you see here, he will run this query first. Whatever is the result of this query, he will build a cache based on this result. Now once that data cache is prepared and data cache is prepared, what he is going to do is he will in the index cache he is going to store the conditions. So if I have 10 conditions here, he will store those 10 conditions in the index cache. So now, now what I have a data cache with let's say 1 million records and then from the source uh, I have another 1 million records coming in. So Informatica what it will do is now it will go to the index cache, see what are the conditions and then do the comparison with the data cache records and send you the output. Okay. Now, If I have to, so now whatever you have seen is this is nothing but doing a lookup on a single table, right? If I have to do a lookup on multiple tables, so I want to use a single lookup transformation and want to do a multiple, actually want to access multiple tables. So then in that case, I will write my own custom SQL here. The way we did is for source qualifier. So I can write my own custom SQL to do a lookup. So maybe this, I can write a query which is nothing but 
doing a join on 10 tables and creating a result set and I am doing a lookup on that result set, not on a specific table. Any questions? I think I got a question. No question? Okay. So, so this is whatever we have seen is your connected lookup with static caching. Now we will see unconnected lookup. This is very useful. So let me do one. Let me just copy this one. Or I will do it one more time so that you understand better. So for unconnected lookup, I I'll do the same functionality more or less. So I have unconnected lookup and then lookup on the departments table, and then I'm going to. Yeah, what is the question? If we are writing, oh, hold on, I got a question. Now, if we are writing our own query, joining multiple tables in a lookup, what will be our join condition for the? Yo, your join condition will be still the same. So, join condition on the lookup and so let's say a this thing. I am joining the departments table with what are the other tables I have? Hold on, let me see. Hold on. So let's say I have a departments table and then I have locations table, region table, country table, right? So what I did is I wrote a query where I am joining the departments table with countries and then with locations and region. Okay, I have a query which where I am joining departments, country, location and region. And I use that as a custom SQL. But in the lookup condition, I am still using the department ID coming from employees is equal to department ID of this, uh, this uh, custom SQL and return me maybe the country name, maybe the location name, maybe the region name and also the department name. Make sense? Okay. So uh, going back to my previous okay. So what I was doing is I was doing now I'm going to do is unconnected lookup. So I will I created a lookup. I will connect this one first and then I will disconnect this. And then I'll go to condition and do department ID is equal to department ID and in the Instead of uh, uh, output, I will click on return. Instead of output, I will click on return. I'll tell you why. That way, it will become unconnected lookup, and I think I'm using this one up here.
So I have a department name. I have created as an output port. And if you now go to my ports, sorry, my functions. If you go to my functions, I have some function called LPP. Okay, let me give a some name. Then you'll understand better. Let's give him and give this one some name. LKP underscore DPT. So if you look here in my functions, I have that unconnected lookup as if it is a function. So I'll double click it and I'll pass a parameter which is called department name. And it will return me department. So it will. I will pass the parameters department number, and it will return me as a department name. So it acts as a function. So department name. Department ID. It will look something like this. So let's run this and see the result. Okay, see, you got the same result. Now, what is the advantage and how you, how this works? So, if you are using an unconnected lookup, it works like a function where you will pass the values. Sorry, where you will pass the values of the conditions as parameters. It, it, it works like a function. So if I have three or four conditions, then I have to pass all those values with commas. 
what is the advantage? The advantage is you, if you create it once, then you can use it in any of the transformation any number of times. You don't, if you are using a connected lookup, then you have to actually create, like, let's say I have same kind of lookup, I have to do five times in my mapping. If I'm using a connected lookup, then I have to literally create five lookup transformations. But if I'm using an unconnected lookup, then I can create a lookup transformation once, and I can reuse it as many times as and wherever in any any expression I can call it. This is the advantage. Second advantage is. If I want to call the lookup transformation with some other functions, I can do that. Let's say if, then I put some condition is true, then call this lookup. Else call some other lookup. I have two unconnected lookup. Up. If the condition is true, then call the lookup one. If condition is false, then call the lookup two. But the disadvantage is, you cannot return more than one ports from an unconnected lookup transformation. And that makes sense because if you look here, whatever uh, this lookup transfer, look transformation is returning, this is assigned to this port, right? So if it returns more than one values, how can you uh, assign more than one values to a single column? So that's why an unconnected lookup can return only one value. Any questions? No? Is it clear for everyone or anyone have any doubt? I am not feeling confident that everyone has understood everything. Okay, this is called unconnected lookup because you can see it's not connected, right? That's why it's called unconnected lookup. Okay. So if you have understood this, then uh, if I go back to my assignment list, I want you to do these assignments now using connected lookup, using unconnected lookup, and also using custom SQL within the lookup. These assignments. Uh, assignment number eight, assignment number nine. Okay, assignment number eight and assignment number nine, I want you to do using connected lookup, using unconnected lookup, and also using connected it with custom SQL. Okay. So we will see a few of the other lookup caches like dynamic lookup cache, persistent lookup cache, but we'll see it on the next day. Because today it will be too much for today. So tomorrow again we'll have a class at 9 p.m. Eastern. And any questions for me? Uh, yes, I was actually looking for the assignment. Okay, what is your assignment number six? Let's see. Uh, Rekha has some questions on assignment number six. Display top two salaries from each department. Uh, okay, so you are trying to do this without using rank transformation, right? Yes, okay. Now, have you done assignment number three? No. Okay, assignment number three and assignment number six are almost same, same kind of logic. You have to use, uh, create a variable and then you have 
for, okay, for assignment number six, what you have to do is you have to sort the data first based on your department ID. First sort the data. Then what you do is you have to capture the current value. Uh, you have to uh, actually you have to yes you have to uh, capture the current value and previous value for each row of each department and compare and find out what you, what are the top two salaries so you can use rank that will be very easy but i don't want you to do use rank because if you try to generate this output without using rank that will build your logic so you have to first sort the data based on the department id and then compare each row within each department and see which is the top salary and which is the next top salary so you have to capture current row and the previous row values got it No, but uh, I cannot do the logic for you. You have to use your logic. If you are having a specific error in some place, then I can help you. But I want you to build your own logic. If you have done it, then uh, send me the uh, XML of that mapping. I'll import it and I'll look into it. Okay. Anyone else have any questions?